Hi, you're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. Today I'm going to show you an interesting technique which uses starbursts over textured gesso. Now I'm making a journal page but you could use this on cards or scrapbook pages or pretty much anything really so it's really versatile. Step 1. Using Ink Essentials Glue and Seal, stick down variety of papers and textured cardstocks to your journal page. Next step is I'm just going to dry brush on a little bit of uh, gesso primer. Leave the gesso to dry and then sketch in any images you'd like on the final page. Mask off these images with a bit of scrap paper or masking film before you start to colour the background. I'm also going to mask off just down the bottom here near the base of the trees because I'm going to end up making that into something that looks a little bit like a hill. So I'm starting with Passionate Plum. Ba 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 Voom Violet. Afternoon Delight Denim, and finally Midnight Rendezvous Raven. I'm just going to spray on a little bit of water. Some of those sprays to move just a little, and then I can see there's an area just here that hasn't picked up much. So I'm going to go back in with the passionate plum. And a little bit more afternoon delight denim. Tissue. I'm just going to take that away from her head there while it's still wet. And the little hand so I can see it. And move the stencil. Well, that wasn't very successful, was it? Alright, so I see the stenciling hasn't really worked. So I'll just go back over that with a little bit of Vava Lagoon Violet. And the Raven. I'm using a paper towel to blot a little of the excess liquid off the background just to give it a more mottled look. Alright, so this is a rainy page, so I'm quite liking that grey. Now because this is over the gesso, all of those colours are much, much lighter than usual which means you get really pretty colours of the, uh, or pretty pastel colours of the Lindy's. So this, you can see it's soaked into the areas of that textured paper. So even though you can't see quite so much texture anymore, it's picked up a little of the pattern. Same with some of these other things. Um, you can see a little bit of the Ranger squares peeking through here, but I noticed that after spraying the Lindy's on top, it's almost impossible to see the music text here. It's just covered that um, paper completely, uh, along with the tissue paper just over here. So that's interesting to know.
All right, so I've grabbed some of the uh, Copic Sketch and my little airbrush unit. Um, I'm just using the one attached to the little air can until um, I can afford the bigger one. Now I'm just going to attach my little stencil with a tiny bit of blue tack here. Make sure it is a tiny bit. Just to the bottom so it doesn't fly away when I'm using the air can. Place the tree sort of where I want it. Now my paper is not entirely flat so let's see how we go. Now, I'm not trying to completely cover everything. I'm just trying to get an outline of the trees and add a little bit more colour. Now I'm holding the air can fairly much straight up and down for two reasons. That's kind of how you use it. And second, so that I don't spray under the stencil, such as the plan anyway. Now the nice thing about the Copix is that I'll pretty much go over absolutely anything. And in case I forgot to mention it before, I'm using C9. I would have used the black, but um, unfortunately it's in a chow. Janice didn't want to cooperate with my air can. I'm going to make it a little bit darker up here towards the edges. And yes, I realise this is going to colour my stencil, but I don't really mind that much, to be honest. I'm just going to leave it a little bit lighter here, like it might be the moon. And then a bit of colour over to the other side here as well. Ooh, spooky trees, nice. So because I used the airbrush, it's not exactly crisp edges, but I didn't exactly have pristine white under there either. So it's sort of a bit, a bit shadowy, a bit creepy looking. I think I like it. <laughs> In the next step, I'll be adding some colour using ink tense pencils. To begin with, I outline what I want to sort of separate with the ink tense outliner. It's supposed to help keep some of the colours from mixing into each other. I'm going to add some of the ink tents to where I'm sort of making my uh, hill area uh, using greens and a few bits of purple. And I'm also adding a little bit around the outside of her dress just to fill in where the uh, white space was from the masking. I'm using a little bit of water here to reactivate some of the starburst stains just so that I can blend them with the ink tents pencil I've added around the dress for a bit more of a a subtle finish. I don't really want a harsh edge between the two products. Luckily because they're water based I can do this with the starbursts. Now I'm just adding a few drops of water here and there to activate the um, starbursts underneath and end up with a bit more interesting patterning. And then by Patting the water off, you get a few light spots. There's a white gesso underneath. Here I am so far. You can see I haven't coloured in my little figure. The sky really does look rainy and stormy. I love the way this sky is turning out. Those Lindy Stamp Gang sprays look awesome. And the little spots over here really made that sort of, looks like the page has been wet. So I love the way that's going. To finish my page, I've added some stamped images. 
I've coloured my lady and I've written across the page using a Sharpie marker. So here you can really see the texture. I've used a piece of textured paper over here and then I've stamped and painted over the top. So you've got beautiful colours and these are also from the Starburst sprays. I've coloured the background with those. And because I gessoed underneath, the Starbursts have gone much lighter than I would have um, previously thought. Um, I have done a few tests before and I know that they get lighter over gesso. But apparently, when you apply a lot of gesso, they get a lot lighter, which is an interesting kind of effect. Now then I've used, I've used some acrylic paint on the dress here. It's really not quite that eye bleedingly bright, but I'm sorry, it's late. And all I've got is some down lights, which makes red look absolutely terrible. But you get the general gist of things. So I've used some ink tense pencils down the bottom here. And I've actually sprayed the blacks with my Copic marker. Now, while I didn't want to write with it over the top here, it is absolutely amazing to spray over stencils and add darker highlights. So I really love the way that the Copic marker has gone over the top of the Starburst sprays that I've used. It looks, I think it looks really fantastic. Love the way the background turned out. These paler splotchy bits. To get these, I've sprayed a little bit of water over the top of my Starbursts. And what happens is that reactivates the dye. I've then patted that off with a piece of paper towel and that removes a little bit of the colour. So you end up with a paler version of the same colours. I thought that was really pretty. Now I'm just going to give you a close-up here of the face. Now on the face and the arms, I'd used my Adirondack Dabbers. Pencil does go over those beautifully. Let's see if I can get a close-up on the little hair ornament that I've added. Now to get that really fine detail, I've used my Copic Multiliners. These went over everything beautifully. Now, I know you're not supposed to go over pencil or over paint with those, but they work and I can always buy a new one. I love the way that they allowed me to get such fine detail. Now, this is a really tiny person and a really small face. Um, so the headpiece is even tinier. And I just went and used a really fine Copic multiliner. So that's fantastic. And of course, I've coloured the little headbanding with my speaker pens. So enough rambling from me. I hope this journal page background using Starbursts over Gesso has given you a few different ideas about how you might use your Starburst products. Another little tool in your arsenal, if you will, for creating amazing backgrounds for your art projects. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.